and welcome to this season of Under SF Inspire. It's the first episode of the season, Tyler. Are you excited? I am beyond excited for this season. I can't wait. I'm one of your hosts, Tyler. And I'm your host, Tina. This season, we'll, we will be exploring the inspiring and intricate world of women in local organizations. That's right. We're giving you an in-depth look at the Bay Area organizations, how they impact women, and how you can get involved. We've got a lot lined up for you today, but first, we're going to introduce you to the organization that was kind enough to join us here. Following that, we will be hitting the streets to ask some of our viewers what their thoughts are. Then we'll get a first-hand look at what it takes to be in an organization, and we'll have an interview from the organization's representative. And we're going to wrap it all up for you with an exciting and beautiful performance. Today's episode, we will be highlighting a closer look at one of the largest yet highly underserved demographics in the Bay Area. Yes, we're introducing you to the Asian American Women Artists Association, which advances the visibility and representation of Asian American women in the arts. And this is pretty personal to you, right, Tina? Yeah, Tyler, this is a problem I see every single day. As an Asian American woman growing up in the Bay community, I, there's such a tight-knit group of us here, but I'm waiting for that moment when we're going to reach beyond that, when there's going to be more representation. And that's pretty discouraging to hear, especially knowing that Asian Americans make up about 23% of Bay Area residents. Yeah, there are so many of us, yet there are few outlets for expression. Well, the Asian American Artists Association is one organization that's trying to fix that problem. And later on, we'll have a representative from that organization here to answer a few questions and tell us a little bit about how they're working to improve Asian American women exposure in the arts. But first, let's hit the streets to see what people have to say about this issue. This is a segment we like to call Words About Women. Hey, it's Tyler and Tina, and we're here at San Francisco State University. We wanted to go on campus to see students' perspective on Asian American women. This is a segment we like to call Words, Words About Women. So Richard, uh, what is your favorite form of art? Um, I would say photography or videography. And do you usually see uh, Asian American women photographers or videographers? You don't see it in the mass media too often, so I, I would have to say no. I really like film. Um, I think movies and film is a really great way to um, translate an idea, um, and, you know, using an art form, so, yeah. And then uh, with these art forms that you guys are consuming or that you say you enjoy watching, do you see a lot of Asian American women being represented? Not enough. Mm -hmm. Not as much as I'd like to. Um, I don't see a lot of Asian American women being represented. Um, I think they're actually one of the most um, marginalized group of people, probably on media, you don't see them a lot. When it comes to other forms of art aside from dancing, okay. why do you think Asian American women don't pursue those arts as often? Um, it starts off at home, I believe. You know, like a lot of like uh, Asian um, like uh, parents, they, they always have, it, it always envisioned um, Asians growing up to be like, you know, they want their kids to be like a nurse or or you know, somewhere to be to have like a doctorate degree of some sort. They, I believe that like in you know like the parents that was like that grew up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s and 60s, they don't see art as as a future. And and I feel like um, a lot of, it's either it's 50/50. A lot of people, a lot of Asian women are gonna pursue it, and some aren't gonna pursue it. And the ones that aren't pursuing it, I believe it because it starts at home. Thank you, Mark. Right. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> It's always great to talk to our fellow SFSU students, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah, we had a lot of fun, and I feel like we got a chance to talk to a lot of different, you know, students of different races and ethnicities, and one just so happened to be Asian American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like we talked to such a wide demographic, hearing all of the students' opinions, you know, and it aligned with what we were saying, too. Um, Asian American women don't get a lot of representation in the media, and it needs to reach beyond that into the mainstream media. Yeah, and it takes us, uh, individuals, going out and just kind of spreading the word about the organization for uh, Asian American women to be represented more in the arts. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, it was always great to hear the students' opinions on like what is fine art because you know we were talking. It's there's so many different things. It can be music. It can be artwork itself. It's just such a wide span. And I'm glad that we are doing this segment this season because we get a chance to see what students uh, think and how they feel about certain situations. This one is extremely important, and we need to spread the word. I think just even pulling um, people that were walking by and us being able to talk to them. It was great to hear their opinions. And we got a chance to get uh, an opinion from different types of students, different ages, different backgrounds. And we are lucky enough to get a, an opinion from an Asian American uh, from the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that we reached such a wide demographic when we were talking. You know, we were talking to different um, females with different backgrounds, how they felt. And also, you got a chance to talk to some of the male about their opinions, too. You know, it's kind of nice to see both sides. It is very nice. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good to see that um, it's not just women who feel a certain way about about this but it's men too and um, yeah we really got a chance to see that also just going around campus being able to talk to these students it's great to just hear opinions of anybody just walking by yeah and they had a lot to say surprisingly uh, some of them didn't know what AWA was or what they stand for, but they were all in for the cause and what the organization is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember talking to some of the students. You know, the minute we mentioned AWA, like this is the organization we're highlighting in this episode, a lot of the students are like, wow, uh, we wish that we knew about this organization sooner. And they love the platform that it's providing for Asian American women artists. I think that Asian American women are represented here in the Bay Area, but it can be uh, so much more in other areas. Yeah, I definitely agree. We need to reach beyond that. And just seeing the students talk about art itself and everybody just being so inspired. You know, when we mentioned that we were doing AWA as one of the organizations, a lot of students are like, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe I haven't heard of that. Well, that's all the time <laughs> we have for now, Tyler. We'll be right back after these commercials. What to expect when you're expecting. A teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. If we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you.
Hi everyone, welcome back to Under SF Inspire, a show where we highlight women's roles in Bay Area organizations. This episode, we're taking a look at the Asian American Women Artists Association. They work to advance the exposure and representation of Asian American women artists. Before the break, we talked a little bit about why these organizations are so important as a vehicle for change, but let's dive a little bit deeper into the world of AAWAA with Cynthia Tom. Take a look. I joined AWA to find out what was Asian about me, because I didn't know. And initially I felt like an outsider, because it just felt foreign to me to be around these women who knew a lot of traditional things, and I didn't. So I joined AWA and, um, in 1998 actually, and started to find a kinship with most of the women. And then in 2006, when it became a nonprofit, finally, it's been around since 1985 or 1989, um, I became the board president. And I've been trying to step down ever since, but I'm so involved and care about the organization very much. And to me, basically, AWA is a social justice organization about equality and equality of representation um, for women of color and we just happen to use art to to put the stories out there. My wish for our organization is that we become this really strong instrumental way of staking our our organization and our women in the ground so US wide we're not just local we're US wide um, so that we don't disappear and we're not erased ever. That's my goal for the future with the organization. There's a valuable set of things that, that has kept me running AWA and being worn out and tired and overworked and no pay volunteering. And that is um, watching women wake up, um, women who have been oppressed, whether it's from you know, whatever country they were in and they've moved to the US, family, male gender, there's a lot of oppression from male gender. I mean, a lot of the premise that for shows, for art ex um, exhibitions, because I'm a curator too, has to do with processes that have worked for me. And I try to figure out how to turn them into an art show. And, um, and just watching the artists, it's actually helped me find my path and my passion, which is to help women heal and help women move forward instead of suffering so it's it's kind of a a loop like they help me I help them hopefully um, and that keeps me going it's the service to humanity that's keeping me in, in AWA and watching the healing happen Hi everyone, and welcome back. I'm here in studio today with Susie Kagami. She's a representative from AAWAA. So uh, first of all, thank you Susie Kagami for joining us here in the studio. It's a pleasure for us to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, with AWOL, the organization had a pretty humble beginning. It was essentially started by artists, um, for artists, back in 1989. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with the organization? Sure. Um, I actually grew up in the arts, um, but I was uh, asked to come in and uh, see a great show. Um, it was actually the end of a, a a workshop program called Place of Her Own mm -hmm. and um, it was last year and I got to know the organization through um, Cynthia Tom and I was just really inspired by the artists and all the artwork that came out of that um, so I got to know AWA a little bit more and uh, found out that they were actually looking for an executive director. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. In a way, the organization kind of found you because huh? you were interested in a place of her own. Um, the exhibit itself is so amazing to me. I feel like the message behind it, giving women a voice, is amazing. One of our professors here at SFSU, um, her art was displayed at um, a place of her own back in 2011. So I think it's great. There's such a big community out there. Um, with being the newly appointed executive director, um, can you tell us a little bit about possibly your goals for the organization? Sure. Um, you know, what I see is just very passionate, passionate people. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a volunteer-run organization for a very long time, and they actually brought me on to look at possibilities to grow the organization. So we're hoping to look forward, bring some younger um, artists 
involved with the organization um, and may possibly grow kind of the visual, well, it's a, it's a visual arts, predominantly visual arts and literary arts organization now. I'd mm -hmm. love to look at performing arts and filmmaking as well. So. Yeah, um, you know, fine arts, I feel like there's such, it's such a broad definition. There can be so many things. There's music and there's just artwork itself that fine arts can follow under. When we were going out and talking to the students, they were giving us a lot of different definitions about fine arts. Um, so uh, with the organization and being a part of it, um, can you tell me a little bit about possibly your favorite artwork that you've seen so far? Oh gosh, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe um, one that recently that has really inspired you. Well, we just last um, last May, this past May, uh, for Asian Heritage Month, we had an exhibition called um, Yudi Kochiyama, mm -hmm. art inspired by Yudi Kochiyama. And um, I don't know if you know who she is, but she was a very passionate um, political kind of activist. And so we had artists from all over the country um, submit. And we had so many different um, voices in the room, from sculpture to film to uh, visual arts to performing arts, all telling the story and all, you know, kind of the stories about our immigrant families mm -hmm. and how we need to have a voice and have a stronger voice, especially in this time. So, um, so I, I that 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 uh, that exhibition it was really great. I can't specifically say one type of art that I really love, so. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I think another great thing about AWOL is that, you know, we have exhibits back from 2011, back from you know, um, 2000, the 2000s, but the message that it has is still rel very relevant in today's society, I feel like, um, especially with a place of her own. Um, as the new executive director, do you see, um, like I see there's such a tight-knit community of working with students and volunteers and then it's all the way to there's the advisory board and also you know executive directors so how do you see um, you expanding your team possibly? Well right now we have a really great um, fleet of interns and volunteers mm -hmm. um, some are volunteers that have come back left went off to um, college and, and came back and they're working in the field already but they're they're so passionate about AWA that mm -hmm. they've come back to help us so we are you know we have interns working on um, everything from archiving projects uh, to um, our membership and to development and, and trying to raise some money so it's a mixture it's a mixture of finding volunteers and hopefully we can find some additional funds to uh, build up our staff as well. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you guys were grant-based, right, an organization that's grant-based. And you um, mentioned to me that you have another job as well as being executive director. So this is something mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of requires a little balance. As a hardworking woman, how do you, where do you find the balance with that? Well, I think it comes from being passionate, being passionate about our communities, being passionate about the organizations you work for. Mm -hmm. So even though we might, you know, spread ourselves a little bit um, to various communities, for me, it's still the Asian American community, it's the immigrant voice, it's still the, the passion behind um, giving exposure to all of these uh, people that are telling stories. So regardless, I think, um, you know, we're telling our own stories now, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a modern day, but it's it's actually very similar to what our ancestors all kind of forged for us in the in the past. So. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, I my parents um, were immigrants as well, going to, into this country. So it's just great that there's a platform for us to be able to express that. You know, so thank you again, Susie, for being in studio and having a chat with me. Our show's theme is about being inspired as Asian American women. So, of course, I have to ask, what motivates you? What wakes you up in the morning? Um, you know, my son is really <laughs> my family and being there for all the people that um, we can be, you know, as an immig as a immigrant family, you know, you do what you can for your family and your friends and your community. So that's really the most important thing to me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we might spread ourselves a little thin sometimes, but it's the fun and the hard work and the progress that we see. That, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having a chat with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. When we come back, we will have a very incredible performance from Tamiko Wong. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, are you good?
good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%, that's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us when others are down to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to oneamericaappeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow. But if we are wise, then we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, and I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride.
If I have things you need to borrow for, no one can fill those of your needs that you won't let show. You just call on me sisters when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'd understand. We all need somebody to lean on. So that's Lean On Me. I actually sang that with my sorority sisters a long, long time ago. And next I'm going to sing Condo, 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 or just a portion of it. And it's about gentrification. And it was made popular in the 1990s in New York City, but it's more and more relevant here in the Bay Area. So here we go. My apartment is for sale. It went condo, condo, condo. Now I'm flat out on my tail. My apartment is for sale. I had to move into a closet. But it went condo, condo, condo. Some techie paid a big deposit to live inside my closet. Hold oh, the prices that we pay. They get higher and higher while the buildings go condo or mysteriously catch fire. I moved into my car, but it went condo, condo, condo. There's a fancy coffee bar in the backseat of my car. My apartment is for sale. It went condo, condo, condo. Now I'm flat out on my tail. My apartment is for sale. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to visit aawaa.net to find more information and events that the Asian American Women Artists Association will be putting on. From all of us here at Under SF Inspire, thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler. And I'm Tina. We will see you next time, San Francisco.